Welcome to another edition of What Barry's Talking About from Barry 360. I'm Dan Blakely. On this week's program, March Mullets for Youth, March Madness for Kids, and Taking a Plunge for RVH, how you can help raise funds for several charitable events in the region, an update on the Barry Colts as the regular season comes to a close, and a special event at Base Borden to mark the 100th anniversary of the Royal Canadian Air Force. We get the conversation started after this. This is what Barry's talking about from Barry 360. I'm Dan Blakely. Three or four years ago, our next guest, Amber McCauley, had her hair trimmed into a mullet to raise money for charity. And she is back, ready to do it again. Tell us who you're raising money for this time round. Yeah, um, I'm working in collaboration with Barry Families Unite. Nikki Glenn and I have um, created a really cool partnership where uh, the programs that I facilitate, the R&R programs, um, are going to be providing relationship skills and restorative justice and social justice tools for participants. And Barry Families Unite is going to provide the participants with food, clothing, um, and a connection to volunteer work and that sort of thing. Um, then we also brought on uh, Marianne from Barry Housing. And they have over 3,000 tenants in Barry who um, fit sort of the target market that we want to work with. And they're going to help us with recruiting participants. And they also have a really, really, really beautiful space for us to have our programs, which I just took a video of this morning that I'll be posting online soon. So you're looking for people who are going to get their hair cut in a mullet as you are going to. Correct. Uh, how was the experience last time for you? Um, it was a mixed bag. So it was uh, the mullet cut wasn't, you know, rough enough at first. People actually thought it was a stylish haircut. <laughs> so I say that to say people who participate, a mullet can look uh, in a lot of different ways. It doesn't have to be like a traumatic experience to cut your hair in a mullet. It can be sort of more subtle. Um, so I went back to get it cut a little bit more risque, and um, I I loved it. I was surprised to find out how many people don't care about my hair as much as I did. <laughs> um, but it really gave me an appetite uh, to, to do it again um, and do it on a bigger scale. So this time we're really honing in on partnerships in the community. So we have Connect Hair Studio on board. Uh, Sharon's been great. She's going to be cutting mullets all throughout the month of March. And then Martina from Charisma Studio is also on board. And she's going to actually dedicate a whole day to haircuts. So not just mullets. If you go see Martina on March 12th, um, she will cut your hair and, in any way. And it all, all the proceeds go to our initiative. So it's very exciting, a super powerful collaborative experience where the community is really pulling together. All right. So you you uh, got a lot of uh, support in the community, a lot of people helping you out, and uh, you, you're looking to uh, help youth who have been getting involved in gang-related activities. Yes. Um, I recently learned that Barrie, Innisfil, and Aurelia are three of five communities in Ontario that have been noted as communities that have significant increase of youth getting involved in gang-related um, behavior. So it can be as subtle on the spectrum as mischievous behavior, maybe um, stealing from family or bullying, and then, you know, on the other end of the spectrum where you're drug trafficking and weapons and that sort of thing. So the r, &R program supports youth uh, with mental health as well as their families that surround them. So it's a holistic approach. And we feel really confident that we'll have some pretty awesome outcomes. You brought somebody along with you today to speak to this a, a little more in detail? Yes, I brought my big sister. <laughs> and she's a teacher at a high school. I'll let her talk more about that. But um, I brought her along for a few reasons. She certainly helped me through my own struggles with mental health when I was a youth. I, it was very turbulent, in fact, until I was about 30. So it was a long haul for my family to support me through my own turbulence. Um, and then she's also a teacher in high school, so she sees a lot with the youth and what they're struggling with and the parents and the caregivers. And so I thought she'd be a great sidekick. Introduce her to us, Celine. other than just sister. <laughs> <laughs> this is Celine McCauley. Celine McCauley, uh, you've yeah. seen the impacts of, of gang-related activity and, and the escalation of that kind of behavior uh, through the schools, I, I presume? Yeah, I've seen um, a lot of struggling youth 
in my teaching career of over 20 years. And uh, I'm just happy that there are more initiatives. Um, even in the past five years, uh, it's such a big drive to reach them. And I think that if the youth have um, more opportunities to connect with um, initiative, see support from the community, I think that they will engage in our help. So I think the more we do, then the more youth we can reach. And for someone to be rocking a mullet, you know, I think, um, and maybe someone at a, the dinner or something could say, why do you have that mullet? And they could say, well, I'm actually doing it for mental health. It might be an opening for a youth to talk to that family member because they, uh, yeah, they, they just need more caring adults. I think we need to model proper mental health. I think that's what I've noticed with my own children and my students. I've told, I've really take responsibility for my mental health because they're watching my activities. A lot of adults these days are disconnected from their children. All right, so how do people get involved with this? When are you getting your mullet? I'm going to go get my mullet on March 12th. Okay. And Martina's going to cut my hair. I've already sent her a picture of what I'm looking for. I want to go a little bit wild this time because, you know, if there's ever a time to try that, you know, wild hairstyle that you wouldn't normally do, do it for a good cause. So I'm going to I'm going to go all in on the 12th. How do yeah. other people get involved? Yes. So we are hoping to uh, get 50 people who are willing to cut their hair in mullets. And mm -hmm. those 50 people are going to reach out to friends and family and collect 10 bucks here, 10 bucks there for, you know, this wild endeavor they're participating in. And um, then we're looking for some hairstylists. We have, you know, some great partners, but we will never say no to more people who want to come forward and help. Um, we set up our social media pages. So mullets for Simcoe County is where you can find us. If you're an emailer, mullets for Simcoe County at Gmail. We've made it easy peasy. Maybe worth mentioning that when I woke up on February 18th, I realized something that a mentor of mine, Peter Block, who's a teacher and an author around belonging and community, he says, too often people wait around for politicians and governments and institutions to solve their problems. And I woke up on the 18th and realized I'm doing that. I'm sitting here waiting for a grant, which hopefully I get, but if I don't get a grant for this work, how can I move forward? And I thought, well, maybe it's almost March. Maybe I can do a mullet campaign. But usually campaigns take months to prepare. So I don't know if it's realistic or not. But I picked up the phone and I called Sharon. And it was a holiday weekend, a Sunday. She answered. She said, yeah, go for it. And then I contacted Martina. She said, I have a day in March that I want to donate money to a good cause. So many people are on board. It's unbelievable. We're hoping to raise $15,000. That'll be enough to launch in April. And um, yeah, then whatever grants we may get, we can, you know, grow bigger. But for now, we're not going to sit around and wait for money to come from, you know, other places. We're in this community. We have great people who are on board. So here we go. <laughs> All right. Give us the social media parameters again. And is there a phone number you can give out? Yes. Okay. So 705-818-3737 is the phone number. You can text or call. Um, and Mullets for Simcoe County is where you'll find us on social media and email. All right. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for what you're doing. This is uh, an awesome initiative uh, again. And uh, maybe it won't be three or four years in between. We're hoping next year we'll go real big. Real big. And we'll be here to help you out. Thank you, Dan. Thanks so much for coming in. Another charitable event happening this weekend involves an icy plunge into Lake Simcoe at Friday Harbor, an annual event to raise money this year for RVH. Barry 360's Ian McLennan gets the frosty details from Friday Harbor's Director of Marketing, Adam Bussell. Adam, uh, tell us about the Take Plunge event that is um, happening on March the 9th. 
Well, we're excited to bring back our Take the Plunge event uh, this year, as you mentioned, on March 9th. And again, this year we're going to be, it's going to be in support of uh, RVH Foundation's uh, Keep Life Wild campaign. Why the support to RVH specifically, this program, and what it's about? One of their key initiatives is the creation of a new healthcare facility uh, right here in Innisfil. So, of course, that's a cause that's near and dear to our hearts. And uh, yes, it's been a mild winter, but the water is still cold. So who is going to, uh, who, who is, who's in line uh, to, to take the, pun, the plunge and uh, where can the public view this? Yeah, so I can assure you the water will still be cold, okay. uh, regardless, having done it uh, myself. Uh, but yeah, so we have uh, a number of teams um, that have signed up, including a Team Friday Harbor and a Team RBH. Uh, so there's a number of ways that uh, listeners can support this uh, great community event. You can uh, join. Um, uh, you can join to be or sign up to be a plunger uh, yourself. Uh, so there's a registration uh, page uh, set up for that. You can uh, support take the plunge as an event uh, ambassador. You could be a cheerleader and supporter on the day for those brave plungers. And then, of course, you can donate directly to the event. And then all of the details about the event can be found um, by visiting FridayHarbor.com. And there's links from our website uh, for sign up, uh, as far as sign up to register and be a plunger, as well as a direct link to the RBH fundraising page. Do you have a target for fundraising or is it, you know, it's usually every dollar counts, right? Certainly every dollar counts. Last year we raised close to $14,000 and we're looking to surpass that, um, that milestone this year. Friday Harbor itself has become a big part of the community, whether you live there or not. You really have embraced uh, a community focus and, you know, bringing people out to Friday Harbor, um, you know, year round. Absolutely. So we, you know, we continue to to grow as a, as a community. You know, as you know, we're really think of ourselves as Canada's luxury lifestyle resort community. Uh, but also an all all seasons destination. So we've really been working hard over the over the last while to you know create opportunities to come out and visit Friday Harbor in all seasons. And um, with the take the plunge, you you you, mm-hmm. t- you did it uh, last time. You know what I did uh, this year. I'm I'm still debating uh, whether I'm going to do it this year, but I have done it. And again, that's why I can assure uh, everybody that the water, regardless of the ice situation, the water will will certainly be cold. But you know what? It's uh, it, it's a great event. You know, the, the other thing about it, which is so fantastic, it's really a great vibe. You know, we have a DJ there. Uh, you know, we're going to have Macaulay, who's going to be our MC for Rock 95. So we really try, try to create like a really fun uh, vibe, really fun experience for the plungers, but also for all uh, all those that come out to support the plungers and, and watch this uh, really great event. Again, the Take the Plunge Polar Dip is this Saturday, March the 9th, 11 a.m. at the Harbour Master Building at Friday Harbour. For more on how you can take the plunge or sponsor someone else, log on to FridayHarbour.com. Big win for the Barry Colts last week, a postponed game due to ice conditions at Sadlin Arena and a rare Tuesday game this week. Barry 360's Will Conkin brings us up to speed on the run to the playoffs with Colts writer and broadcaster Gene Pereira. Another week of chatting Colts, Gene. They handled the Sudbury Wolves 7-3 and uh, some some ice issues uh, canceled their Saturday game against the Niagara Ice Dogs. Uh, it's uh, postponed to March 19th. And then uh, Zach Weigel scored the overtime winner to beat the Peets. Um, to get things going, let's unpack the ice issue. Uh, what happened there? Yeah, Saturday night before the contest, the, the Zamboni passed over and and uh, and did its job freezing the ice and what they do is they end up drilling down uh to put uh, the pipe down to put the, the post in uh and uh, to put the net in and what happened was the 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 one city worker uh, i guess he ended up drilling not only through the ice but through the concrete and into a one of the coolant pipes and uh that sprung a leak with the coolant pipe and it was just gushing uh, out of the hole, and uh, they tried to. Uh, uh, There's nothing at that point that they could really do to stop the coolant from coming out, and uh, they they had a wet vac out there, and uh, you know uh, the, the coaching staff, the ownership, they went over and looked at it, but it was pretty clear that uh, they weren't going to be able to stop that coolant. You know, I, I don't think anybody wanted to volunteer to put their finger in it during the game <laughs> and to hold on, but it was. 
Uh, it was an unfortunate situation, and uh, I mean, you literally had fans showing up at the rink. Uh, you, that they, you know, were, were they had the door, they kept the doors closed, and uh, eventually they announced that uh, the game was being postponed. But, but uh, it was an unfortunate situation uh, that the, they just couldn't find a way to stop the coolant uh, from 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 coming out after the uh, the drill had struck the pipe. Back to the Wolves game now. There was a lot leading into that one with the allegations about a bounty on the Colts' Kayshawn Aitchison. Um, then head coach Marty Williamson came out with some words about the situation. Uh, w- what did he have to say? Yeah, Marty clearly, obviously, they're, you know, they, he said they're confident in the league that they'll, they'll look at the situation. But Kayshawn Aitchison with the bounty, uh, you know, the reports that the Sudbury Wolves have put a bounty on Aitchison's head after a fight in a game January 18th in Barrie. And, uh, you know, the, the league hasn't really commented on it at all. And uh, it's been a couple of months now. So uh, I think the Colts are looking for some action. And, you know, again, Marty Williamson decided not to trust Keyshawn Aitchison and the Colts are without their top defenseman, uh, you know, for these games in Sudbury. Uh, Barry ended up winning the game last Saturday, or sorry, excuse me, last Wednesday in Sudbury, and uh, it's a situation that you hope, you know, as the playoffs come around quickly, uh, that the league's going to deal with. But, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, it, it was clear from uh, Marty Williamson that, you know, they're, they're looking for the league to kind of rule on this uh, so they can kind of move forward. And uh, the understanding that, you know, they're obviously concerned with uh, Kayshawn Aitchison and uh, his safety that, uh you know, that an actual bounty uh, that was put, you know, supposedly reportedly put on his head, that uh, that situation's been dealt with by the league. And the Peterborough one was a big win. Uh, it also has some playoff implications, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously Peterborough came in, uh, you know, uh, eight points uh, behind Barry for that final playoff spot. And, you know, we're into the stretch drive here. And uh, Barry had control that one last night, 3-1 to one in the third. And, you know, a pretty desperate Pete's team found a way to get, you know, tie the game and get it into overtime. And uh, But the Colts got, uh, ended up getting the win on uh, Zach Weigel's second goal of the game. Uh, he actually gave Barry a 4-3 lead late with a minute, but Sudbury tied it in the last, or excuse me, Peterborough tied it in the last minute of the game. But Weigel and Charles were connected again. And talking to Zach Weigel, he kind of said, you know, I, I didn't do anything. It was all Bowen. Bo took the puck up the ice, and I just went to the net, and he said they actually discussed uh, the shift before Gelsman run one off the crossbar. And uh, when they when they got to the bench, Weigel said, look, you just take it. I'm just going to the net. And uh, it, it ended up working out pretty well. And, they, again, the captain uh, coming through with three assists last night and what was a huge win, Barry now nine points up. And, uh, you know, in, in a situation here where, with 10 games remaining, they win five. They clinch that final playoff spot. Um, some of those games that are coming up, they host the Steelheads uh, tonight, the Battalion on Saturday, then hit the road Sunday in Oshawa and Tuesday in Ottawa. That's looking like another tough stretch for them. Yeah, it's going to be a busy stretch and, you know, two tough division games coming up here against Mississauga and North Bay. And, you know, Thursday night, they, they played well against Mississauga all year. And, you know, Barry, again, you know, they, they kind of... Uh, you know, when you talk to them, obviously they want to lock up that playoff spot, but, you know, they want to win hockey games. And, uh, you know, the confidence for this team has gone way up. And, uh, you know, again, especially here on home ice where they've played really well. And uh, they got a 4-1 win against Mississauga last week uh, on home ice. And, uh, you know, they're hoping for the same here uh, tonight. Always enjoy chatting Colts. Till next time, Gene. Thanks, Will. What Barry's talking about is a weekly podcast featuring the best Barry and Simcoe County have to offer and more. You can get caught up and make it easy to keep up in the future by subscribing to What Barry's Talking About through any podcast distributor.
Still to come on what Barry's talking about, Base Borden getting ready to celebrate 100 years of the Royal Canadian Air Force lighting up a special memorial, and our good friend Macaulay from the Afternoon Drive show on Rock 95 is putting himself out there this month in another March Madness for Kids. Now this. Our community rocks. It's a well-known fact blood transfusion saves lives. It's also a well-known fact that the world relies on voluntary unpaid donations to fill the need for blood. The need for blood never ends. Canadian Blood Services in Barrie is calling on you to help save a life. Please consider donating today. Appointments are mandatory and must be booked in advance. Book today at blood.ca, through the Give Blood app, or by calling one 888 donate Our Community Rocks is brought to you by 400 Chrysler and Barrie Chrysler, winners of the 2022 Pay It Forward Award at the Barrie Business Awards. Our Community Rocks on Barrie's Rock Station. Rock 95. This is what Barry's talking about from Barry 360. I'm Dan Blakely. Mark this on your calendar, the 100th anniversary of the Royal Canadian Air Force. Base Borden celebrating on April 2nd with the illumination of the Ad Astra Monument, which symbolizes Canadian aviation excellence and pays homage to the historical roots and everlasting legacy of the RCAF. Here again are Ian McLennan with Wayne Hay, the Honorary Colonel of the Canadian Forces School for Aerospace Technology and Engineering, and Rory McKinnon, Honorary Colonel of the RCAF Academy at CFB. Borden. What is the celebration and uh, what will be going on that day? So the celebration is uh, the 100th anniversary of the Royal Canadian Air Force. It was actually the commissioning of the Royal Canadian Air Force happened on April 1st, 1924. And before that time, the original uh, pilots uh, were trained on Base Borden and the first hangar aerodrome was at uh, Base Borden. I believe it was first erected in 1916. Uh, when the, the base was founded, and then the Royal Commissioning came in in 1924. So in 100 years, it's it, you know we are basically Base Borden is the home home of uh, the Royal Canadian Air Force, the birthplace of the Royal Canadian Air Force. So we feel April 2nd is a is a great day to actually be able to celebrate that, and we're celebrating with the history of the Air Force. And we're also planning to uh, to showcase the future of the Air Force. And uh, we're going to do that through three specific events. On April 2nd, there's the unveiling of the Ad Astra Monument. What is the monument and what does it symbolize? Well, the Ad Astra mon- Monument is something that the uh, 16-wing honorary colonels have uh, created. And we've commissioned Marlene Hilton Moore, one of our local sculptors, to uh, put this together. And it's a uh, beacon. It's a 22-foot high beacon, laser cut, uh, fully LED lit up. That is at the uh, entrance of the North Gate into uh, Borden. And uh, we're going to ce- celebrate that and have the unveiling, which public is welcome to uh, join us at 1130 uh, on base right at the entrance, and uh, we're looking forward to everyone to come and join us and uh, and celebrate that day. And that astra in Latin means to the stars, so obviously that's appropriate. It means pathway to the stars. Okay. And the, the idea is it, it's, it's a, we want it to be a landmark and something that people visit and they see the future of the Air Force. You know, the, uh, the day is celebrating not only the past, but it's also celebrating the future. So then the past part of it is we're going, we've working with Canadian Forces Base Board and we've uh, renovated the hangar, uh, Hangar 11, which is the original hangar at, uh, uh, on, on the base. And the, the, that is going to showcase the past. And all there's a lot of artifacts uh, that uh, from the years, uh, and it's part of the uh, the Canadian Forces Base Board and Museum, and it, it's on the original flight line. And uh, if you, when you walk in, you really get a sense of uh, of what's happened over the last hundred years. And so that uh, unveiling is going to happen at eleven o'clock. That uh, the hangar is actually at uh, nine thirty, and then it rolls into the eleven thirty uh, unveiling of. Uh, of the Ad Astra Monument. But the, hang- the hangar's going to be open to the public at 11 o'clock? Correct. By yeah. 11 o'clock, the public can uh, join everyone at the hangar and uh, and uh, tour the hangar at that point. You, you talked about the, the roots of uh, the RCAF and the link with Base Borden, but those roots continue 
Today, um, the base is home to the Got dedicated 16-wing yeah. board. So yeah. maybe you could explain the extension of those routes. Uh, you know, here we are in 2024. So Canadian Forces Base Borden is, has been for many years the uh, the training ground for the RCAF. So there's a lot of the operational work is done outside of uh, Canadian Forces Base Borden, but the training, for for example, for uh, the RCAF Academy, which I represent, is, uh, is the leadership school for all the non-commissioned military. The uh, Canadian Forces uh, Aerospace and Technology School trains uh, the mechanics that fix the airports, uh, airplanes and keep them in the air. Uh, we we have the uh, tactical uh, helicopter squadron on base, which is uh, takes care of uh, maintaining all the Griffin helicopters for Canada. Uh, so they're trained on, on on that. So there's a lot of the training happens in the the that the 16 wing. That's their job. It's uh, is is that uh, training of the future leaders and the future uh, people that uh, uh, maintain the Royal Canadian Air Force, and it happens at base board. So th- this opportunity for the public to celebrate the past of the RCAF, but also the important role that uh, it will play in the future. That is correct. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the opportunity. And uh, we welcome uh, the uh, public to come and join us for the, uh, that unveiling and uh, uh, be part of that uh, celebration of the past and the future for a board. Our buddy Macaulay down the hall at Rock 95 is at it again. More March Madness for Kids. 30 days of raising money, which you can help with by putting Macaulay to work. Could be something traditional. Could be something outlandish. All in good fun and all for a good cause. Barry 360's Will Conkin got him to turn his radio mic off for five minutes to tell us how his March Madness for Kids works. Ooh, yeah, the madness. Um, March Madness is a basketball tournament. March Madness for Kids is my annual pledge to spend every single day of the month of March eating clean with no cheat meals or junk food and exercising daily, no days off, no rest days, so 31 days straight. But what the exercises are, what I do physically, it's not up to me. It's up to people who donate to help Easter Seal. So you throw down a donation, you get to force me to do something that you come up with. So it can be a hard exercise, it can be a chore, it can be manual labor, just as long as you're getting me moving and sweating, it can involve costumes. Sky's the limit to your creativity to help Easter Seals, help kids be kids, and uh, force me to do some tough stuff. Does anything come to mind specifically of uh, past uh, things that you've had to do? Well, there's always been a great balance of like businesses getting involved. So there's like fitness trainers, gyms and places like F45 or nine rounds, like gyms that are like, want to showcase their business because I I film everything I do. I document that I'm doing these challenges. So it's a win-win situation for businesses because they get to promote their product. Like, Hey, you can come do this fitness class. We're going to put Macaulay through the ringer. So there's been that. And then there's been this off the wall kind of like, wear a dress and carry a chainsaw down the main street of Barrie. So like, I guess that's physical activity, but it's got this silly craziness attached to it. I've had to chop wood. I've had to carry firewood from a pile into someone's barn for them. I've had to work out with uh, cheerleaders, like youth cheerleaders getting ready to go to Florida for a competition. They put me through their daily fitness and I was almost throwing up at the end. So if you're a team, if you're a fitness business owner, if you're a fitness person, hey, get some uh, promotion. If you have some chores that need doing around the house and you don't want to do it, you can make McCully do it. So literally, it, there's been some I, – I had to flip a one of those giant 400-pound tires. I went to the Wasaga Beach Fire Department, and they made me flip the tire from one end of the parking lot to the other. That was extremely difficult. I've had to do firefighter training. So I put on all the fire gear, run upstairs, do the hose, all the different uh, circuit training. So it's kind of cool and educational. But, yeah, sky's the limit. You can literally come up with anything. As long as I'm not going to hurt myself or break the law within reason, you can force me to do anything. (laughs) Yeah, we don't want anything bad happening to you. Uh, Do you find it's uh, harder to do the exercising or to, uh, to not eat junk food and to eat clean? Every year's different. Sometimes I can get in the mindset of um, uh, it, it's just momentum for me. Uh, I yo-yo fitness wise and weight wise, and this kind of helps me be accountable. When you're telling the world that you got to stick to something, it really helps. Um, right now, I'm heading into March 
uh, probably a little more out of shape than usual because I just had a baby boy and I put on some sympathy weight and I was eating a lot of junk food in that last trimester and the first month of his life. So I think the junk food is going to be hard this time around because when I get into a routine, the the, the exercise, it's going to be di- difficult because every day is going to be different. Like I can get into a fitness routine of a 45 minute to an hour workout every day. But when it's like, okay, I got to go up and collect sap out of, off of trees at Six Mile Lake at uh, noon on Wednesday. And then Thursday, I'm going to Innisfil to um, run laps around a library in a dress. The scheduling is going to make it a little more difficult. And uh, any so like what's kind of the coverage around? You said like in Collingwood, Barrie. Aurelia, all over the place? Anywhere? Pretty much pretty much within Simcoe County. Easter Seals, Ontario, um, service children here in Simcoe County. And because the Rock 95 listenership encompasses Simcoe County, if you can hear me put the challenge out, you can come at, back at me with a challenge. And then uh, what's the goal set at? Well, every year the goal has kind of gone up. And um, last year we were able to hit... 3,000. The year before was 2,500. The year before was 2,000. So um, we're unofficially aiming for $5,000 this year because we would love as much help and support from the community, local businesses, and uh, partners as possible. What's also I want to touch on, uh, what's the history of this? How long have you been doing it? And uh, yeah, kind of what's the whole time? The whole thing started a little less than a decade ago just as a fitness challenge, a way to be held accountable. Who wants to join me for madness? working out 31 days straight. And when there wasn't that hook, that um, why are we doing this, it, it, it wasn't very successful. So the next year, which was my first year living in South Georgia Bay, I, I decided to brand it for, for youth-based charity. And every year I've picked a different youth-based charity. So I've raised money for youth centers in Simcoe County. I've raised money for women's shelters that help youth in Simcoe County. I've raised money for alumni football organizations that help underprivileged youth play sports. Uh, I've done it all. And so it's been years of uh, just kind of bouncing and sharing the funds around the county. Where can people uh, donate or, or, or put in their suggestions or find out or see the videos, too, of you posting? Because you're going to be on social media, too. It's real simple. Uh, last year's challenges, if you need inspiration, are at rock95.com. That is this, and there's one page, the March Madness for Kids page, where you can see all those videos. You can also fill out the form to make a challenge. And there's also the link to make your donation. So it's all very simple on the March Madness for Kids page at rock95.com. Perfect. Very much looking forward to seeing what happens to you. I bet you are, because <laughs> everybody wants to see me suffer. So the link to make your donation. So it's all very simple on the March Madness for Kids page at rock95.com. And that's our program for this week. Thanks to Ian and Will for their input, to Matt Ladder for his technical touch, and to you for listening. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to What Barry's Talking About, rate it, review it. You can also keep up with What Barry's Talking About on X at Barry360, on our website, barry360.com, and there's our daily Kickstart podcast available from any streaming service and on our website. I'm Dan Blakely. Hope you'll join us again next week.